Hello everybody and welcome back to the table. Today we're taking a look at a knife from Kershaw and this is one of their budget traditionals. So this right here is the Kershaw Culpepper and this recently went on sale for $20 direct from Kershaw's website. So I'm hoping in the future it will go on sale again but I definitely decided to pick this up because budget traditionals have kind of been uh, my, one of my things lately. So I'm going to make some comparisons to some other knives on the table. But we can, of course, just take a closer look at the Culpepper. So again, this budget traditional knife, it is a slip joint. So that's what I mean when I say traditional. So we can see right here, it's very uh, much that old world look and feel to it, as well as materials wise, that's what we get. So when we look at this knife, we can see our handles are red bone. So they also offered this knife, I believe, with some jigged bone handles as well. Um, we even have a traditional style shield on there, so we can see the Kershaw logo on the shield. Um, bolsters as well, we can see that there are some brass liners in there along the back side. So pretty interesting design. It's kind of meant to be in the vein of a Barlow style knife. I really do like this clip point blade, very pronounced. And it's a pretty decent size for a traditional knife. So let's pull out to the ruler and we can compare sizes as well. So take a look at the blade length. So our blade length here is coming in at about three and a quarter inches. And about a little over three inches of that is actually cutting edge. So that's a good size for a traditional. Um, overall length is coming about seven and a half inches. So in hand, it certainly does not feel like a small knife. Um, and even weight wise, it comes in just a hair over three ounces. So it's not a heavy weight, but it does feel quite substantial in your hands. We do have some jimping along the spine of the blade here, which may or may not be something of interest to you because of course a slip joint, slip joint has no locking mechanism. So if you bear down too much on that jimping, that could lead to a bad result. Um, but the action itself being a slip joint design, we can see it's one long pull, fairly smooth. So we can see it just open and close. It's uh, also quite easy to open. So this is not a super hard nail breaking pull. Um, you can just very casually use the nail nick, get your hand in there and open the blade with no problem, uh, no difficulty whatsoever. Um, you can also just pinch it from here as well if you'd rather go that route also. So nice good size knife. And uh, one of the things I look at when I buy modern traditional knives, I like to look just inside the construction here and you can see it's fairly clean. So you can see in there. Because a lot of the places that assemble these knives for various companies, um, they tend to leave a lot of dirt and grime inside the mechanism, and it's really not a good sign of a quality build. But being Kershaw, I know they, they know how to make knives, know how to get them done, and even though, of course, these are produced overseas, um, they know which factories to work with to make these designs happen. Uh, so this is a pretty interesting knife overall. I do appreciate that for a slip joint, of course, we also do have a lanyard hole if you prefer those on a knife because there's plenty of room in the handle, not only for that beefy blade, but for the lanyard. So a lot of cool options here. Pretty nice, honestly, for $20, I don't think I can complain because there is definitely some competition out there. Um, and if anything, Kershaw is kind of late to this kind of traditional field because we do have some other knives from some other companies, which we can take a look at right now. Um, so two come to mind. So the first company that I'm thinking of is this one, from this one right here. This is a knife from Rough Rider Reserve. And so Rough Rider has been making inexpensive slip joints for a long, long time, but their reserve line tends to be a little bit higher end, uh, def definitely a different type of blade steel, because our Culpepper here runs D2 steel, and so do all of the knives of the Rough Rider reserve line as well. That seems to be their mainstay steel, so they're definitely um, trying to go for the same um, market, the same style, the same price point, essentially. Um, and our Rough Rider Reserves do come in a little more expensive, again, because they don't necessarily have the same buying power that a company like Kershaw has when it comes to mass production. Um, but I'm also thinking, comparison-wise, we have a knife on the table here from Rosecraft Blades. This is their Beaver Creek Barlow. And again, Barlow style knife, we can just throw this on here for comparison's sake, but you can see a little bit smaller, but again, D2 steel, bone handles, bolster, very reminiscent of the style of knife. And all three of these knives are modern traditionals, meaning they are manufactured today, um, but they're definitely in the vein of yesteryear's knife, you know, the knife your grandfather would have carried, 
um, to slip joint non-locking knives, which of course have just enjoyed a very popular resurgence recently. So it's really cool to see Kershaw kind of stepping in on this game um, with different um, designs. And they don't, I don't think they have quite as many out there as either Rough Rider Reserve or even Rosecraft Blades do at this point. Um, but they're definitely trying to poke their head into this market and see if it's worth, you know, breaking into. And I think offering this knife at such a budget price is really their aggressive way of trying to get these new and young upstarts kind of out of the way. Because while this knife did go on sale for $20, and that's where, you know, when I got it, the uh, retail price currently on their website is about $43. But that being said, I think you can probably find this model um, at various retailers for a lower price. It may not be this version with the red bone. I think that was exclusive to Kershaw's own website. But the actual model itself, I'm sure, will be more widely available um, in the future. So it definitely curious to see what you think about Kershaw kind of joining this game. They see there's money to be made in the traditional modern knives, and I think that they're stepping in kind of cautiously with a couple of models, seeing how it how it's going. And I know this isn't a super, super new thing. They've been doing this for a couple of years now, um, but I want to see if they're definitely going to try and compete with these smaller brands. And in a way, that might not be a great thing for the market because a company like Rosecraft Blades doesn't necessarily have the same clout, you know, in terms of factories, accessibility, and things like that as Kershaw does. So these knives um, can't necessarily compete in every different um, marketable term, if that makes any sense. Uh, so I will continue to support companies like Rosecraft Blades. Um, I will continue to buy Rough Rider reserve models, you know, that pique my interest. Uh, but I think it's worth keeping an eye out for Kershaw on what traditionals they are going to be offering soon, especially when it comes to materials like bone, you know, brass, we have all these traditional um, ingredients, I guess you could say, materials that make a traditional knife. So very sharp D2 blade right here. It's all really well done, to be perfectly honest with you. I have no complaints. Um, even if you did pay the full price, $43, full retail um, MSRP, keep in mind our competitors here are usually priced at the 50 ish dollar price point so they are relatively speaking the same value even if kershaw is trying to to lure you in with some sales and there's absolutely nothing with, wrong with that competition can be a certainly a good thing for the market and uh the kershaw culpepper here i think is kind of leading the charge for kershaw at least in terms of you know getting people to be more interested in these traditional style knives so again tell me what you think should kershaw uh, try to break into this market more or should they leave it to the smaller guys to try and make a buck out there um, leave your comments below hope to hear from you soon and i hope you all have a knife day thank you for watching Bye bye